So hi, everyone. Um, my name is Asar Ali, um, and I'm a software engineer at Google um, on the Google Open Source Security team. Um, and before this, I used to work on um, Envoy, which is another CNCF-hosted project. And then before that, um, I was working on privacy-preserving protocols. And I really do love cryptography and math. Um, so about any of those, if you want to talk about that, I'm totally happy. So today, I'm just going to quickly wrap up our keynotes um, and then you know, introduce the, the rest of the stuff with kind of what I view as what is so amazing about SigStore and why SigStore can move us from uh, like a whole different game uh, and system of s securing our supply chain. So I'm kind of going to give two of the principles that I think are really the core reasons why SigStore is cool and important and not just any old signing tool. Oh, yeah, this is totally why. Okay, so the first that I want to talk about is signing with strong bindings. So as you kind of go throughout the day and you start learning about people's integrations, their tooling, and you know why they're using SigStore, I kind of want you to keep this um, idea in mind about how SigStore provides you with a capability of produ producing identity-based signatures. So in Priya's demo, which was awesome, um, you got to see how Priya binded her identity to her Git commit. Um, but it's not just identities like your email or your personality. It's also places like where are you running um, your code and what is the identity of the, the place you're um, actually creating some sort of data. Um, and so with that, you kind of get this really interesting and key property of being able to integrate with other sorts of frameworks like Spiffy Spire um, in order to produce and actually practically achieve a lot of these supply chain um, security frameworks like Salsa and Fresca. Um, in actual practicality. And what I think is kind of crazy is that without this sort of identity-based components, a lot of what we're able to do would not have been possible. I like never would have been able to imagine achieving some sorts of high-level salsa attestations on free platforms without the use of these identity-based signatures. So as the time goes on and like, you know, as the day goes on, I really encourage you to think like, where else can we be using these identity-based signatures? What other sorts of identities can we integrate with? Where can we you know, create some of these attestations, um, and what can we do with them? So the next thing that I want to talk about um, is this transparency first principle. Um, so I really, really love this, and also coming from a place of uh, not trusting many people or just being an inherent skeptic, um, I think the idea of having transparency first everywhere is a really awesome and cool property that we can start to leverage even more. Um, so what I think is awesome, so this is the Recore logo, um, if you don't know, is that Originally, a lot of you may have thought Recore is just there to provide this signature validation property. Um, we're using a lot of these short-lived certificates um, based on identities, and we need a place where we can make sure that they, uh, the signing events actually occurred during certificate validity. Um, but I don't think it's just that. I think that having a, a Recore log or a transparency log is actually more important than just that. It provides auditability. It provides resilience when you have compromise, which inevitably does happen. Um, and it provides a place where you can go and search and discover and validate that all your actions that you've done were actually expected. Um, so I think as, you know, as time goes on, as the day goes on, as you start to learn about this, um, try to think of more ways that you can start to leverage this data or more ways that you can start using this, um, maybe even beyond just this short-lived certificate validity. So, uh, <laughs> you know, as this sorts of have, you know, like as we sort of look at this record log, you might be thinking, you know, what are we doing with this? What, what, how are we going to leverage this? What are we going to do next? Um, so obviously, the answer is uh, blockchain. Um, I, I don't even you know, know how to introduce this, but I think um, the transparency log is an amazing place um, where we can start leveraging uh, Web3. Um, no, no, that is a joke, uh, and I really hope that uh, I can continue to speak at this event, and I'm, I'm sure, um, yeah, many of you realize I'm not actually being serious, but what we do start to see is that there are lots of ways that we can start integrating this transparency log information. Um, in places like Guac on the right hand, um, that's a graph of attestations and um, S bombs and related material that we start to aggregate and collect. Um, what I think is really cool is that there's this local global mapping that we have, um, if any of you are mathematicians, I just wanted to say that, but um, we have this like global view of all these attestations in the world that we're living in now with this local view of, you know, can you use this internally? Can you use this for fetching a single package? 
Um, and with the ability to kind of view both of those together, you get this entire rich set of information that you're able to leverage in all sorts of new ways. So with that, um, I'm just going to conclude and thank you all. Thank you to Luke and Priya um, for giving those amazing keynotes. Thank you to the PCs, the organizers, um, the MCs, and everyone here who's able to sort of share their thoughts, their ideas, um, their contributions. And yeah, I'm excited to talk with all of you. So please give me a shout out. Please talk to me. Um, please talk to me about Bitcoin. <laughs> um, and yeah, thank you.